Today, I'm gonna tell you everything you could possibly need to know about creatine. Timing, dosage, side effects, benefits, if you should cycle, what type to take, anything you can think of, it's gonna be in here, so let's get to it. So creatine is by far and away the most tried and true research-backed supplement there is. There's literally hundreds of studies at this point that have shown benefits for muscle size, muscle strength, work capacity in the gym, and just overall improving energy and performance. So as far as how it works, let's get the sciencey stuff out of the way and I'll keep it very brief. It works by allowing it into the muscle cells and converting to creatine phosphate, which will then in turn turn into ADP, which will then in turn turn into ATP, which is your body's primary energy source. Now the main concern you may have with creatine and the thing that stops many people from taking it is the concern of some weight gain. And yes, it's possible you could see some weight gain when you start creatine, but you have to understand this is not body fat. What it is, is your body's going to be taking in more creatine phosphate and water into the muscle cell. So your body holds more water, but it's also holding water right where you want it to be. Remember your muscles hold a lot of water. So this is why it's a mistake to stop taking creatine in a fat loss phase because you're not taking something that could help you get better fat loss through better performance and energy and help with your body composition by having more well-defined and fuller looking muscles. So this is why you can't get too attached to the scale because at the end of the day, the scale isn't what you're trying to change. It's your body that is and creatine is going to help with that. And if you really think about it in a fat loss phase, your energy supply is going to be worse. So if you can take something that's going to help with energy, why wouldn't you take it just because of a number on the scale? Now, as far as how much you should expect to gain, I usually find people gain between about one and three pounds and this can take up to a few weeks to actually show up and this process can be gradual which I'll explain why later in this video. Now you may be wondering what are the potential side effects of taking creatine and there really isn't much. It's been shown to be extremely safe. The main side effects that some people notice is gastrointestinal stress, maybe some bloating and cramping and this usually happens because you're either taking too much or possibly doing a loading phase especially if you don't drink enough water on top of that. Usually you want to take between between about three to five grams per day, unless you're doing a loading phase, which would be about 15 to 25 grams per day. But that's where most people see the side effects. In a loading phase, it doesn't actually saturate your muscle cells better, it just saturates them faster. So without a loading phase, it can take three or four weeks to fully saturate your muscles, whereas loading, it can be done much faster, but again, much more likely to see some of the side effects. As far as when to take it, it really doesn't matter. Remember, creatine is a stored energy. So basically, the best time to take creatine is whenever you'll remember to take it. If it's in your pre-workout, great. If it's in a protein shake during the day, especially if you don't like the taste, great. But it really doesn't matter and don't fall for this. You need to do a pre-workout, post-workout, all these different times. They're just trying to get you to spend more money on their product. Now, what about cycling? Does your body get used to creatine and you need to cycle off for a month or so and then come back to keep getting the benefits? And at this point, there's no evidence to suggest you need to do that. You can just stay on it all the time and you'll keep getting the benefits. If you stop it, you're just going to lose the extra creatine phosphate you have and then reaccumulate it again. So I would just stay on it all the time. And as far as what type of creatine to take, there's a lot of different ones on the market. Everyone likes to claim that they have this new best, whatever it may be, just stick with creatine monohydrate. There's no research to suggest any of these other ones are any better and creatine monohydrate is way cheaper, will work just as well, if not arguably sometimes even better. So just stick with creatine monohydrate. And then as far as determining who this is for, who's gonna benefit the most, Really, the people who are going to benefit the most are people who don't get a lot of creatine from food. And since creatine is primarily in animal-based products, a lot of meats, if you're someone who doesn't eat a lot of meat, or especially if you're a vegetarian or vegan, then creatine could have a huge benefit for you. But quite frankly, I find that pretty much everyone will benefit from it. There are rare occasions where somebody's a non-responder, and this would probably be someone who gets a lot of creatine from their normal diet anyways, but it's not going to hurt anything, and it can definitely be a big help. So if you're someone who strength trains, which is something you know me, I recommend highly, almost regardless of your fitness goals, supplementing with creatine can be a big help. And if you wanna take it a step further and you're looking to lose fat and build muscle at the same time, then make sure you check out this top video next and I'll go over what you need to do. Otherwise, I think you'll like this bottom video instead and I'll see you in that other video.